The Native Americans say, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Anthropogenic factors, such as an exponential growth of the global population, rapid and ad hoc industrialization, and urbanization, as well as unsustainable use of natural resources, have contributed to the acceleration of global phenomenon of increased frequency of disasters, climate change, severe ecological imbalances, and marginalization of already vulnerable communities around the world. Bumiyagul, I am 86, Jap 87, 88, 89, 90. Je je dan dan doch panda trois kilomètres pour nous voir sur nos papa, pour nous nyau ang. Mais les gens monotunko, l'autre monotunko parce que je je de faire nyau nyau bugao. Cela a amené beaucoup de dégâts du point de vue des établissements humains. Des maisons ont été dégradées, des gens, des familles ont été dégradées pour aller ailleurs compte tenu du fait qu'ils ne pouvaient plus rester. Parce qu'avec la fuite de la mer, les maisons étaient complètement endommagées. Parce que là, parce que en fait, la, la dimension de la catastrophe n'est pas apportée d'une communauté qui n'ont pas les moyens pour pouvoir. In the past 10 years, over 1.7 billion people have had their lives disrupted in some way by disasters, with over 95% of the deaths occurring in the world's least developed countries. At the same time, $1.4 trillion have been spent worldwide to help rebuild lives and communities. <laughs> Di baru baru mutu di kita api dah arak sakra ganda amaru. Makudu lama angge potot api baru mutu antega tawa api dah. Me aluting baru agge nala dagan dabe kejar. Api nakar sabar dat api serang serang kena me gal pasne wisnan dekila. Makudu meka ganggu ter galup gam meten deh tena ino. Meka mule ke pasne illo me ganggu ter. Et me arie dat me kiamar gak karana gal alat. पासने में आप ही मेक वैदक कर करांडे भी आप ही में आदत करने आप ही आप ही रहता मत दाने मेक मुको तो में पासने ताते की ला लेकिन आप ही में आगे न करना नहीं दिलों को दिया। Almost all global monitoring processes focus on large scale disasters. However, surveys have revealed that most disasters are small scale and localized. Losses due to recurrent everyday disasters have a significant impact on the lives and livelihoods of low-income households in developing countries. These disasters go largely unnoticed and hence national or international assistance is not available. Studies have shown that a majority of the people affected by these frequent and localized disasters belong to marginalized sections of society. Within these communities, it is the women, children, elderly and the persons with disabilities who are the most vulnerable. If you look at my head, we have more than 19 companies with contaminants and dangerous with diverse elements. A taxa de cancer is more high than the normal, beyond the media regional and the media national. Every day we know that a neighbor is sick of cancer. We have children with cognitive problems, beyond the normal, children with problems with pulmonary problems, bronchial problems, cardiac problems. Today, what is impeding us to live as our ancestors is the privatization that there is today. Today, we talk about the trees. The trees today have other owners. They are como se dice esto, eh, patentado, y, y eso a nosotros no, eh, nos perjudica, porque a través de los árboles nosotros, eh, yo creo que desde ahí empieza todo, porque hoy día si hablamos de, de cómo está nuestra tierra, de, de cómo está erosionado. The development process eh, makes eh, huge promises to, eh, to the communities, but after a few years of that model placed in place, the only ones who has actually getting the development bonuses 
are only the, the economical, the big economical groups, but the local communities who are facing uh, directly uh, dealing with the uh, enterprises and, uh, and all the infrastructure um, uh, set in their uh, own communities uh, only uh, are facing poverty and sickness. Very often, government policies, plans and activities aimed at building resilience are not informed by the priorities of those most at risk. Local people have critical knowledge on the risks they face and only when the knowledge is utilised, the resilience building policies and disaster risk governance can be more effective. When we are talking of disaster risk governance, we need to actually see that how it is not only a statement of intention, but a commitment for an accountable action. Now, to me, we need to actually unpack that further. When we are talking of disaster governance, then we must be clear that from whose perspective we are talking of. The people who are at risk, the local governing institutions, the nation states who are most impacted, are they participating in the decision-making process? Have they been consulted? Have they informed what they are experiencing in the ground? That, to me, is the basis for the views from Frontline. At GNDR, we believe that the policies, plans and activities designed to build resilience should be informed by the priorities of those most at risk. So at GNDR, we started our Views from the Frontline programme in 2009. Uh, we aim to collect uh, and highlight the voices of the most marginalised. Uh, one of the targets of the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction is uh, the target E, which says that we need a substantial number of countries to have both national and local disaster risk reduction strategies by the year 2020. Now, for a national strategy for disaster risk reduction to be really uh, aligned to the Sendai framework, it has to include the voices of all the stakeholders. And when we talk about stakeholders, we're talking about local government, private sector, civil society, communities, um, and importantly, the people who are vulnerable. So in that sense, in order to really align the national strategies and the national policies around disaster risk reduction to be Sendai framework aligned, your work is essential because you are actually bringing the voices of the communities to the national policy. You are at the front line of understanding where are the people who are vulnerable, who are the people who are vulnerable and what do they need. It is very difficult many times for governments, even the local governments, to understand this. So if we don't have organizations like yourselves who go to the front lines and bring these voices to the top, their voices will never be observed. So I feel that uh, your work is essential. Uh, it's very important that your work is supported by the international community and recognized. Views from the Frontline 2019 takes the process a step further. It is the largest global review of disaster risk reduction at the local level. It is being implemented in 50 countries across six continents. Views on the Frontline 2019 uh, is funded by the European Union and builds on the learnings from these previous iterations. It aims to strengthen the inclusion and collaboration between at-risk communities, civil society, local government, in the design of resilience building policies. This includes the implementation of 750 tailored community designed local action plans. Views from the front lines contributed to the implementers as the grassroots organizations to give them their own evidence because they could them uh, implementing the views from the front line, understanding in a different way what is the meaning of disaster risk reduction for them. VFL actually is working to empower the community themselves, first of all, to identify their problem through the, the, the data collection, but also to reflect 
and to provide some local solutions to the problems and finally go to the decision makers with those uh, uh, solutions that they found and see how together they can mobilize the resources needed to, f to build their own solutions. One of the most effective ways to reduce the steady rise in disaster losses lies in addressing the causes of high-frequency, low-intensity disasters by strengthening local capabilities. This requires increased levels of inclusion, participation and collaboration between at-risk people and local state and non-state actors, principles which lie at the heart of a people-centered approach to resilience building and form the primary focus of VFL 2019. VFL for me is um, getting the voices of the community heard. It's the mouthpiece amplifying the voices of the community. If you see certain policies that could help communities, you know, develop action plans on their own, now VFL has helped us to, you know, to provoke that because communities now take, you know, actions, uh, take uh, initiatives by themselves and then able to approach their closest authorities for, bureau, for, for, for changes. In the, all the previous situations, it was more of an extractive kind of an exercise. So we actually focused on just collecting data. But how this data can be used to really make some sort of difference at the people from where this data were originally or primarily extracted, that area was, was kind of like not given adequate considerations. In 2019, we actually tried to incorporate that particular aspect. So it's like that we're not just going there and asking the questions, we'll also be working with them, try to help them to figure out, given their situations, how they can gradually um, go to the next level of reducing the risk they are living with. Most of the communities, they are very grateful with the, with the project because um, um, some of them, it was their first time to really talk about the hazards, about their vulnerabilities, because um, most of the time, um, the approach of the, the local government is uh, very top-down. So um, they don't really, they are not provided with a chance to, to really discuss and have a dialogue with the local government. Yeah, so it provided them a platform to, to raise their voice, to really um, put forward their concerns and issues in relation to disaster risk reduction. In Senegal, uh, we, we've seen a lot of decisions made uh, after we shared the uh, data, the findings uh, of uh, VFL with the decision makers, as well as uh, in Mali. And I'm happy to say that based on some work we've done previously on, uh, with VFL, uh, some of our actors actually have been appointed as spe uh, special key actors uh, by the government and they are collaborating with the government actor to together think and take some sustainable decision that may totally change the way, I mean, the perspective of disaster risk management and response in those countries. Que vous entendez quelqu'un même qui n'est pas du, 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 du milieu, il va vous dire, écoutez, euh, voilà ce qu'il faut faire, voilà ce que nous attendons, voilà ce que nous attendons. Une fois que vous allez collecter toutes ces données, je crois que l'État aura une vision globale de ce qu'il devrait faire et de ce qu'il devrait apporter aux collectivités. Que nous soyons conscients, la collectivité doit être consciente des mots qu'elle souffre quand même. Il y a un diagnostic qui sera fait par des techniciens parce qu'ils sont très initiés. Et une fois que ces données sont sur le du, 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 du décideur local, il va pouvoir bon, traiter la cause. C'est vraiment le diagnostic, c'est le message qui nous donne la thérapie et voilà la thérapeutique qu'il vous faut. Voilà comment on va intervenir. Donc ces données que vous allez récolter, ce sera une base de données très très forte pour, 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 pour vraiment euh, euh, plaidoyer la cause des, des, des sinistrés, pour plaidoyer la cause de la ville, pour dire écoutez, voilà ce qu'il faut faire, voilà ce qu'il ce qui, ce qui ne faut pas faire. BFL can, can give us some uh, movement. First of all, because it's a worldwide process, so it has backup for that. It's not just my idea of, of telling you that this is the troubles, this is the problems we face here in Chile. There is a, an instrument, it's a process that, that has the uh, worldwide uh, approval. VFL 2019's participatory process 
results in an online database which can be disaggregated by country, community, gender, age and disability. It also leads to strengthened capacities of local actors to participate in resilience building processes. It also increases collaboration and leads to more effective disaster risk reduction. So I think because a VFL programme collects evidence on local realities on a variety of themes, it can be used to inform discussions along uh, in, many different, um, in many different arenas. So for example, it collects information about risks and threats, it collects information about uh, governance systems, it collects information about ecosystems, about um, how local actors implement resilience building activities coherently. Then all of this can be used and unpacked in different fora so that it informs policy and decision making in different aspects. For the future, I think it is essential that this particular process that is views from frontline is integrated to the mainstream reporting mechanism by the nation states where they can use the civil society organization to facilitate the process to get the views from the front line, views from the communities or people at risk and the local government at risk so that that can be part of a formal reporting mechanism of the nation states when they are doing that for SDG or climate negotiation update or Sendai monitor reporting. By helping communities mitigate small-scale disasters and develop local strategies, Views from the Frontline 2019 will go one step further in helping local people become their own agents of change. Views from the Frontline 2019, bringing community voices to the global conversation.